directly to the Prime Minister. You know that the scientific evidence backs this approach. You know that the restrictions you introduced won't be enough. You know that a circuit break is needed now to get this virus under control. You can't keep delaying this and come back to the House of Commons every few weeks with another plan that won't work. So act now, break the cycle. Let's talk now to Teoti Wells health correspondent Nicola Hill, who's in London for us. Nicola, I was just saying to my team, I can't believe we're here again. It feels like deja vu watching this report and everything you know we're discussing was a second wave inevitable, do you think? Well, it's interesting, isn't it, Maria? Because you and I have talked in the summer whether this second wave was coming. And I'm afraid to say that certain scientists had predicted back in March that there would be a second wave. I was talking to Professor Paul Hunter this morning and he said, yep, yeah, that was one of the things that he said. He said it was inevitable. The reason being is that ordinarily when you have coronaviruses or flus or something like that, they dip down in the summer, they come back in the winter because your immunity has waned. Now, we haven't got this herd immunity. We haven't got immunity to COVID-19. And that's why they didn't know when the second wave was going to come, but they knew that it would come definitely. Now, Professor Hunton sa says there's a couple of reasons that he thinks this has happened. The first one, of course, was being that over the summer, because the infection rate had dipped, people perhaps had relaxed a little bit. Perhaps they weren't taking the, the hand washing, the social distancing as seriously as they had been when the figures were much higher. And of course, people went on holiday. They went travelling. Now, as Professor Hunter said, if they went and stayed in a, a villa somewhere, isolated with their own family and didn't mix with anybody else, that probably wouldn't have spread the infection. But if they went to bars, they went to restaurants, they went to places where there wasn't as meticulous social distancing as they had from their own hometowns, this is when the virus began to spread from person to person. They then travelled home and then they spread it within different areas. And that's why we've seen on Europe, it's been our holiday season this summer. You've seen people moving around and that's why that's happened. His other reasoning, and he says this is controversial and doesn't have a consensus, is because of children going back to school. Now, we've had this here in the UK a couple of weeks ago, maybe about three or four weeks ago, the kids went back to school. Other countries have begun to go back. And of course, not the under 10s, he says, but certainly the teenagers. Evidence is showing that they can pass the virus around. They might not be symptomatic, but they go home, they see their parents, they see their grandparents, they're mixing. They too, perhaps not being as vigilant about keeping that social distancing, that hand washing and mask wearing. And he reckons that's another major reason why Europe wide, you are seeing this spread of infection. And we just heard in, in that report about Keir Starmer calling for a circuit break. Professor Hunter says, really, that's the type of thing that probably would have to be put in place, but for a long period of time so that you could have a more effective test and trace. That's another reason why he thinks that the infections have been going up is that many countries in Europe in particular have not got quite the same testing and tracing that they have in places like South Korea or New Zealand. It's so grim hearing you say all of this because I, I really do feel like, you know, we were here months and months and months ago. Um, the question I'm sure my audience is asking as well, when, when, Nicola, does this improve? I wish I had a crystal ball, Maria, and I wish I could tell you, but actually that's the exact same question I did ask Professor Hunter this morning. He said April. He thinks it's going to be a grim winter and that unless there is this lockdown and they managed to get the infection rates right down enough so that testing and tracing so that you can contact people who've been in who've been mixing with the, those who are infected he thinks it is going to be grim he said there was one positive thing and that's the fact that at least the trials of the vaccines will be shorter because there's so much infection around you may remember we were discussing in the summer one of the problems with the trials was the fact that there weren't there wasn't enough infection so vaccinated volunteers weren't coming into contact with it now we've got more infections they're more likely to come into contact and see if these vaccines are working and he also told me one rather interesting fact he said that 
my daughter's granddaughter's granddaughters will probably still be living and impacted by COVID-19, but much less seriously, because history has shown us that back in the 16th and the 19th centuries, certainly here in the UK, but also across Europe, there were pandemics like this one. But over time, the virus becomes much, much less aggressive and less virulent. So that's good news for our descendants. Nicola, I'm glad we've ended <laughs> on an optimistic note. Thank you very much indeed, Nicola Hill. <laughs>